no one has spread false claims. What they've said is that a small migrant community just caused a lot of problems. Springfield it's city manager said there's no evidence that immigrants are eating animals. It that just means the city manager, I think, isn't fully in touch with what's going on on the ground there. City officials say the rumors may have begun with an unrelated case in another part of Ohio, where a U.S. citizen was arrested for a gruesome incident involving a cat. On the ground in Springfield, we found deep tensions. It's just to me discrimination and um, xenophobia and, and bigotry and racism. Vilas Dorseville runs a community center for Haitians. They just believe that um, their words have no impact and it's not true. So um, immigrants in Springfield, especially Haitians, they, they are so concerned for their lives and the lives of, of their kids. In the last few years, officials say as many as 15,000 Haitians legally in the U.S. have moved to the city, which had about 60,000 residents before. What's going on, guys? Hey, I want to come back to you. I want to follow up on something that Trump said the other night during the debate with Kathleen Kamala Harris. Campbell to Harris, the communist. <laughs> but anyways, she, um, he said that there was a town in Ohio, Springfield, Ohio, where immigrants, Haitian immigrants, were eating pets and ducks from ponds and parks. Um, is that true? I don't know if it's really true in that, you know, there or not. I'm not there. But we do know from all kinds of videos and everything else that is occurring, it has been occurring in places like in the UK and um, you know, France, Italy, whatever, you know, where, where so many of these um, migrants have been flown in. They're eating pets, cooking pets on the streets. Now, again, this is happening in Springfield, Ohio. I don't know. And, but again, I would say that it's very likely. And again, there have been reports from people that live in the general area. They have reported this. Are they lying? Or is the uh, city manager lying? Well, I think the, uh, I think the city manager definitely has a, um, a reason to lie and say it's not happening. But, um, I mean, I think it's very possible it does. But, again, you can't discuss that. You can't say that. You can't report on that. Or if you do, you're a racist. Because, again, the, uh, the Asian immigrants are black. I mean, so, so, again, if you say anything about it, especially if you're white, oh, my God, don't you dare. Don't you dare say anything about that. But, again, I'm going to show you a clip in a minute from CNN showing exactly what I'm talking about. If you report on that, if you see on that, if you talk on that, you don't hit the talking points of the left, then you're racist. Watch this. Guys, real quick, I'm going to show you kind of what the mainstream media is reporting on these Haitian immigrants, these these migrants, kind of what they're saying about this. And, and again, they're pushing a, a narrative to where, again, these are good people. These are great people coming in. They're helping out. They're, they're doing jobs. I, I get they're doing jobs that Americans don't want to do. You know, again, they're cleaning, they're cleaning up the area, they're cleaning up the city. They're cleaning up this country to make it better. And again, man, why in some cases that the heavens, in the majority of them, it does not. You know, again, they're coming from areas that are that are impoverished, that are that are torn apart. And again, we want people from areas that um, that that are that are doing well. That again, have a certain level standard in which people live. You know, again, you know, when we get people from other areas, we tend to, to go down. You tend to get um, the the overall kind of energy is down. You know, and the reason for that 
It's because again, these people, they're they're not used to living at the standard that we have. And again, you can say that. Well, that's racist. That's me. You can't say that. It's just it. And again, it's true. We truly have to reconcile that. But again, I'm going to show you a clip here that shows exactly how the left is trying to frame this. And again, I'm not saying in some cases this happens, but it's not typical. It's definitely not typical. Guys, watch this. What started slowly, we had an application pool that was a little bit different. People coming to work here. People, people looking for jobs. What he's welding here again are welded axle components. Jamie McGregor is the CEO of McGregor Metal, which makes welded parts for the auto and farm industries. Right now, about 10% of his workforce is Haitian, over 30 employees. I wish I had 30 more. Our Haitian associates come to work every day. They don't have a drug problem. They'll stay at their machine. They'll achieve their numbers. They are here to work. And so in general, that's, that's a stark difference from what we're used to in our community. McGregor acknowledges the sudden arrival of so many new immigrants is a challenge on multiple fronts. But he believes this is partly how the industrial Midwest can regrow. We want more jobs in our community. And in order to fill those jobs, some jobs need to be people who are not originally from here. A community of more than 80,000 emptied out to less than 60. That is, until the last few years. Our churches, we see new people. In the pews? Yes, absolutely. Wes Babian was the pastor at First Baptist Church for almost 20 years. For years, we've lost people. But you hope somebody else will come and take their place. That, that hasn't happened here. Until now. Because there are folks from Haiti who are coming to church. Lukens Merzus, who, among his many other jobs, mans the soundboard for Sunday services, is one of those new Haitian members. Why Springfield? <laughs> of all places. Merzus, with his wife and daughter, were among the first Haitian families to arrive here in 2018. I got a decent job when I was in Haiti, and then to make a difficult decision to leave, it wasn't easy. You know, guys, man, the reason I want to show you that was because, again, while the American dream is great for everyone, it's for our people first, for our citizens first. That importing people, because again, we think they're gonna they're gonna work better or cheaper or whatever. And again, some are gonna work, they're gonna work hard. But a lot aren't. They're on welfare, they get food vouchers, they get housing vouchers, whatever. And again, that's the reason why I wanted to show you that clip. And in contrast to the next clip, I'm going to show you. Because again, we have we truly have to realize, man, there are a lot of problems that come along with, with importing so many people and allowing them to settle. Again, elevated crime, elevated auto accidents. You know, again, funding is gone. You know, the funding... For, for people that are homeless. And again, the Haitians are not homeless. They get vouchers for housing. They're not homeless. Who is? Their own people. The citizens of this country, of that city. They're homeless. And again, the funding is running out to help them. Why? Because so much funding is being spent on the Haitians. Well, I want to show you guys a clip from a city commission meeting. Watch this. The homeless problem. I don't know of a single homeless Haitian in this town because they all got vouchers. But I can show you a whole bunch of people that have been displaced because I'm that guy. Rob, you know, for 25 years, I've worked with the homeless in this community. You know, a lot of people don't know because I'm not the guy out there blowing the horn because it ain't about me. It's the Jesus in me that goes out there and does it. Trust me, there's days I'm tired, but I'll get into homeless camps that nobody in a suit and tie will walk into. None. They trust me because I've never let them down. You know, and guys, if you don't think it's here right now, in October, we are getting ready to hit a wall here. There is not any relief. 
for the homeless. The homeless people in this community are not the people you think they are. The squatters that aren't happening. It, it, it's not there. There's veterans. Come see me. I'm not real hard to find. Ask anybody on the street. They'll tell you how to get a hold of me. I'll take you there. And no, they don't want your toothpaste and your peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> they want you to come up with a solution to why they're displaced, why they lived in a house. I personally know, and I'll testify under oath, my hand to God, somebody that lost their house. They were there seven years. The landlord said, hey, I need you to move out, find a temporary place. I'm going to remodel it, and then you can come back. Thank you, Baron. Lie. They moved him out, tripled the rent. Thank you. Follow Thank you for the speaking. money. But some, like Bill Moynihan, say the city suffered from the change. Oh, it's been disastrous. What's your response to Haitian immigrants who say they're coming here to revitalize Springfield? That's not what's happening for Springfield. I mean, it might happen for them. It might happen for the, you know, the landlords that are enriching themselves, the city manager who's trying to pad his budget. In a city meeting last night, the parents of 11-year-old Aiden Clark spoke. Aiden was killed in a school bus crash last year. After a jury found a Haitian immigrant guilty of vehicular homicide, tensions escalated. I said to Aiden that I would try to make a difference in his honor. This is it. Tonight, they're urging politicians and others to stop using their son's death to spread hate. Do you know that one of the worst feelings in the world is to not be able to protect your child? Even worse, we can't even protect his memory when he's gone. Please stop the hate. Yeah, Michelle. No, again, guys, man, I'm not against legal immigration done the right way. But the thing is, we have truly got to recognize that we can't just allow people, you know, that many people to come into an area, expect there not to be problems. They're overwhelming, you know, the infrastructure of that area. You know, and, and again, I'm sure there are going to be some people that are great, that are going to work, or they're going to work hard. But, but I would gather the vast majority are not. And it's causing a lot of issues with law enforcement and everything else. And again, right around the time that we have to fund the police, it's being done on purpose. It's being done on purpose. Well, again, man, most of the funding is going towards them. You're better off if you go and you come across that southern border and claim illegal, claim immigrant. You have a better chance of making it. We have, we have truly got to realize, man, we are going to become them. They're not going to become us going to be lowered down our level but uh i want to show you guys man if you question what's, what's going on and you say hey wait a minute man that's not right you know again man they're eating our, our pets they're acting in certain ways or their crime rate has gone up whatever if you say that and you're white oh my god you're racist you're racist Guys, watch this. I do think it's a legitimate conversation to have about the societal, public safety, health impacts anytime um, cities or communities get drastically changed because of our immigration system, whether that's in Springfield, whether that's on the border with Mexico, whether that's New York City, which has had issues. So I don't think that's an illegitimate conversation to have. Even in your answer, obviously, you don't agree with where Trump is on it. You admitted there are health impacts and that there have been public safety impacts. Those are not illegitimate. I mean, those are not illegitimate conversations to have. And I think people in communities all across this country are having them. Now, whether we have them responsibly or flippantly or whether we have them seriously is the real yes, question. Yesterday, when he, said, when, he said, when he said that, he wasn't being uh, sarcastic. He wasn't being hyperbolic. He was amplifying a conspiracy theory that I think you would agree puts a target on the back of Haitian immigrants and that it is based on racism. Would you agree on that? Anti-black racism would be more pointed. Do you think that if, do you think that if there were 20,000 Scandinavians <clears throat> that had been sent to Springfield, 
they, you, people would be saying I, that they're eating cats look, and not, dogs not, and geese? I'm not going to answer for Why him, not? for his memes or anything else. But I am No, going no, to, but I'm asking you, do I, you think that no, conspiracy no, I, because, is based on racism? Because I, I mean, it's an easy because, answer, because, yes because, no? because I'm not going to answer. I don't that, know. That was, I don't that was, know. A, that was a lot. But you shut the hell up. I mean, seriously, shut the hell up. You know, again, we have asked about this. What you're doing is you have a question to Scott that's framed a certain way. You already framed it. It's like, you know, what Trump did is racist. Is it wrong? Don't you agree, Scott, that's wrong? You know, again, you framed the question to do a certain way that he has to think about when we handle my answers because number one, Trump is not racist by saying what he said. He's not racist at all. And again, all you, all you gotta do is little research. Get on Twitter, X, and again look up stuff. You see video after video, if you look it up, of, of people from Haiti, from certain African countries that are cooking pets on the streets of Europe, you know, when they're they're allowed in. And again, we, we have truly got to understand there's all kinds of issues going on there and we're catching up to it. So again, it's not that Donald Trump or anybody else being a racist. And then you said um, that, it, and it was reported on several different outlets the day before the debate. So again, I'm sure it was fresh on his mind. But but also, you said that you know if if they're white from these immigrants from Scandinavian or Norway or you know whatever you said, I forgot what you said, but that nobody would question that. You're right, nobody would. Are you stupid, Anna? Of course they would. Nobody would. Why? Because again, there's never been a problem with that. Never. That's something they don't do. You know, again, man, there's a a different different level of economic influence, of cultural influence. And again, you're the one being racist, and everyone on the panel is. Again, that assumes that you know Haiti should be equal to Norway or you know wherever. They're not. They're not. And it doesn't make Trump, Scott, me, anyone else a racist for saying that guess what? They're not equal. They're not equal and they're not. I mean again, <laughs> Haiti, I'm sorry, I'm sorry it bothers you so much, but Haiti is a shithole country. I mean, because I, I, because I don't know the answer. And I'm not going to sit here and answer for somebody. Yeah, I don't I, talk to Donald no, no, Trump no, about what about the me. motivations what are. The and, I don't, and I don't answer to you either. But, Scott, but what the is the but answer the, for you? But the, but as, the bottom as, line as, is... He's trying to give you a thoughtful but, answer. But the bottom line is, immigration is a top two issue in this election. It must be discussed. And we're either going to go down a rabbit hole here, which is not, not the real issue, or we're going to talk about the real issues in which communities, cities, whatever are dealing with real okay, societal me, and policy the, the reason, so we, are wanna, going, so the wanna, reason we are going down the so, rabbit hole so, is because the man you support is making us go down that rabbit hole. The reason we're not talking about the legitimate issues you have brought up is because he is claiming with no facts that Haitian migrants are eating pets. And that is a dangerous conspiracy theory to be spreading to America. And you see, he gets away with saying crazy. If you have such a big problem with people talking about it, and, and you're worried about misinformation being spread and it being dangerous and whatever, then why are you talking about it? Why are you out there talking about this? If you're so concerned, the fact of the matter is you're not. You just want to make it look like you're concerned. So you can tell Trump, you know what? You ought to stop being racist. You ought to shut up. And again, Trump is not being racist. He's reporting what was reported to him. And again, you can look it up. 
But before the debate, there were several different outlets within the couple of days leading up to it. They reported what was happening in Springfield, Ohio. It's reported. And again, Trump is just repeating that. Again, is it true? Well, I don't know. I'm not there. But I will say the uh, the man the the city manager I'm sure has a vested interest in the answer being no. So again, he's going to say no, it's false. And again, all you gotta do is look up on Twitter X. See, this stuff has been happening in Europe and I'm sure the United States. I'm sure. But again, they don't want to report on that. Why? Because it makes them look bad. It makes their policies look bad. We truly have to understand this stuff is bad for our country. But again, this many people. It's bad for our country. It's going to destroy the country. And it pretty much already has. And again, all Trump is trying to do is look it's destroying our country. And you're like, well, you know, would he say the same thing? If we were talking about white countries and Scandinavia or Norway, you know, whatever. No, I'm sure he wouldn't be. But the thing is, Anna, and you know it, we don't have problems out of people from Norway or wherever. And there's not problems. They're, they're not saying they're eating cats. They're not. You know, again, there's a different, a different economic um, influence, different cultural influence. They're not doing that. But, but again, in today's world, you have to equate places like Norway and Haiti as equal. And they're not equal. One is a shithole country. We truly have to be honest about that. And if it wasn't, they would not be coming here in droves. Guys, if you would, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks. You son of a... You son of a... You son of a...